come here, get off. Today we're talking to Fiona Zed, pronouns she and her. Jamaican Bone Zed is the author of more than 30 novels, including the Lambda Literary Awards finalists Bliss and Every Dark Desire. Her novel Dangerous Pleasures received a Publishers Weekly starred review and was a winner of an About.com Reader's Choice Award for Best Lesbian Novel or Memoir. Under the name Lindsay Evans, Fiona also writes novels of romance and recklessness for Harlequin and other publishers. She loves French pastries, English cars, Jamaican food, and she writes a lot. Her latest novel, A Lover's Mercy, is available now. Hey, Fiona. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So we just heard your fabulous bio. By the way, I love the pastries, cars, Jamaican food. We got to kick it one day. Um, But we always like to ask, what did little Fiona want to do when she grew up? Oh, my gosh. How little? Whatever (laughs) first comes to mind. As far back as you want to go. Interesting. I, the first thing I thought about was just to learn to write cursive, to be the first one in my, all of my friends to write cursive because. <laughs> <laughs> That's a talent and a slack yeah. song. Huh? I love it. <laughs> not a really big, you know, aspiration, but just like I wanted to be first. And it was something so geeky, like, oh, yes, I want to join my letters. Well, most kids these days can't write cursive. My son writes like a serial killer. They don't teach them anymore unless they go to Montessori. So my kids started out learning how to write cursive before she learned black letters. But that's weird. They don't normally do that. That is interesting. Yeah, I thought it was just sort of a basic thing. But I know I'm behind in the time. They use computers so much that they don't even literally teach them handwriting anymore. They don't even teach. I had to teach my son proper spacing. Like... This is how you wow. like so that it's not just yeah it's bad <laughs> and I would thought the teachers would at least say something mm-hmm. to them and they yeah, okay. have not okay. so all right then yeah so um yeah you're winning <laughs> for thank you for yes that I was the first and I used it every chance that I got not very legible right. but you know it it was all they were all joined together it's details yeah, details exactly. So what drives you to write? What drives me to write? Um, I just have these stories in my head. Um, or I'm wandering somewhere, as I would love to do today. And then some, a story occurs to me. Or I see, I see a couple talking and I imagine what they're talking about or what they're fighting about or what, they, what they'll do after they leave the public space. And I just want to write the story. So I feel like every time I go out into the world, a story comes to me and I have to write it down. If I finish, that's another question. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you, I know, you know, you started out cursive was it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how did you get to the point where you decided that you were going to be a professional writer? Like what's your origin story? Oh my God. That sounds so intense and so like superhero, right? Cause you're a superhero. Stop. You are a superhero. <laughs> That's so nice. I love it. Um, my origin story, quote unquote. I have always just been a big reader. Like my mom, when I was in the belly, she read to me. And so I think I came out just wanting to uh, read the stories for myself and to absorb these stories on my own. And once I was able to read them, then I wanted to write them. And um, joined with the whole obsession with learning how to, to write cursive. Like once I learned how to write cursive letters, I wanted to actually like create a story from these letters. And so it just seemed like a natural progression. Like it's all my mother's fault, basically. (laughs) You blame her. Thanks, mom. (laughs) You had a lot of really big career milestones. Which ones are you most proud of and why? Oh my gosh, career milestones. I think for me, like the biggest thing was when I was able to get my book published. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, it was sort of, it was a quick transition from, okay, I finished my book. Um, I finished it to my satisfaction. I have an agent and then it it was really fast, but it took me a long time to actually finish something. And so, (laughs) um, it sort of validated for me, like if you just do your work and complete your work, (laughs) 
<laughs> you will get rewarded by, you know, money and books being published. So mm-hmm. that was, for me, that was huge. And um, yeah, that just sort of started the whole, the whole train that was like book number one, but you know, it went on and on and on. And so now I should be writing my, I don't know what number it is, but I was working earlier today. But yeah, that, <laughs> that was the biggest milestone for me. Like huge. Yeah. That makes sense. What, so you just said that you were working earlier today. I'm curious about mm-hmm. what your work days look like right now. Like how do you structure your writing? I need more structure um, right now because of everything happening in the world. I think my my work schedule is just a mess. Um, I get up and I, you know, do the news thing for way too long, and then the the day sort of like falls in line more or less. But when I'm on my game, you know, work day perfectly like arranged. Typically, I get up around between eight and nine. And then have coffee, have some fruit, and then just start working by mm, 10, 11, and then take a break after a couple of hours, eat lunch, mess around, internet, and then after that, back to work. So it's like a sort of boring schedule, but I also have um, my writing partner, Sheree, who lives in Florida. We call in by Skype every eh, four days a week. And then we, we write together, like literally write together. She's on Skype. I'm looking at her face and I'm writing. She's looking at my face. And um, yeah, we push each Wait, other. is your writing partner Cherie Greer? Mm-hmm. Shut up. <laughs> 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 That's dope. We're having Cherie on the show later <laughs> this oh, season. Oh, how funny. Yes. <laughs> yes. She's so awesome, right? Oh. Yes. Did not you know, know that. We are learning that <laughs> there it's a very is a, small world. It's a very small it's world. It's a very small world, yeah. <laughs> I love it though. We we want to big up black femme writers and yeah, we're finding that all the good ones roll in a pack. So <laughs> I like this. Yeah, sure. It's you funny. Are. I, so I have a writing I came up in magazines. <clears throat> and I write nonfiction. Um, and I have my writing partner. So I'm like, oh, yay, somebody who you get to work with. Like, writing is such a solitary thing. Mm-hmm. And I did it for decades without even considering the idea of what it would be like to do it with a partner until my partner was like, we should work on this thing together. And now it just makes everything better. Like, we write mm-hmm. books together. We do. We take on consulting projects. Like, we do everything. And it just makes things better. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah, it pushes it does. you. And you don't realize how much you needed it. Shit. <laughs> yes, yes. Like for me, I'm like, I'm so easily distracted by everything. And so Sheree's like, okay, bring it in, bring it in. You have to get things done. If you don't get anything done, I can't read anything of yours. So just make my life easier and just work. You know, so it's, yeah, I worked for a long time by myself as well. And so it's, it's like a 180. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. See, power is strength in numbers. <laughs> yes, when it's black people involved. I was bust out into a song, but I'm not feeling particularly creative. Give me a second. I will. I am inspired. Just can't come up with a good song. But maybe later. You know. There's always space for that. Yes. <laughs> so you were born in Jamaica. Yes. You currently live in Spain. Mm-hmm. So how do the places that you live have lived influence your work? They do quite a bit. Um, like, I love traveling. And I think more so the places I travel to inspire my work than the places I live in. Um, because, it, like, once I left Jamaica, of course, when I left there when I was, you know, 11, 12, 13. So I wasn't writing too much back then. But it was years later when I was accessing memories from, from back then that I, like, just felt automatic and right and perfect to write about Jamaica um Mm -hmm. and so it's I almost you know like pull in a space into my creative life when I'm away from it so Mm -hmm. um I'll probably have an Atlanta story sometime in the next year and a half (laughs) um and who knows if I stay in Spain I probably will um I might write something about that later (laughs) How long have you been in Spain? Not very long. Um, since January, full time. But oh, I've been wow. back and forth for two years. 
All right. Yeah, that's not long. <laughs> yeah, not at all. Your writing partner was in Spain for a while, right, Cameron? Yes, she lived in uh, between Barcelona and she was in Lisbon in Portugal. So it makes for interesting timing, as you know, like trying to match things up so that we can work at the same time. But yeah. she's back in the States right now. So that's lucky. It's like a what, six hour time difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll see how long she just she just had a baby and she's already itching to leave. Like once there's a vaccine, she's like, I got to go. <laughs> She's like, I understand get that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, that. I'll be sad because it'll mean that my nephew is not here. But also, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the world is so big and and magnetic and interesting. It's impossible to to like, I don't know, not hear that siren call and go out there. You know, mm-hmm. even though I'm here in a really interesting and and really rich place. I want to keep exploring, whether it's like the countryside or other countries. So it's Mm -hmm. hard to stay put. I get that. (laughs) Well, as we said at the top of the show, we read an excerpt from Rise of the Rain Queen last week. Which I loved. Which you (laughs) loved. And so did I. And thanks again for letting us share that scene on the show. Of course. Thanks for reaching out. Yes. So, okay, I'm going to, I think I'm going to butcher this. The book is set in the Tanganyika region. Tanganyika? Is that right? From what Mm -hmm. I, Tanganyika region. Okay, hey, hey, hey. Hey. I mean, I'm open to like, you know, whatever, because I am not from there. But (laughs) yes, that's that's what I've learned or someone taught me. I'm not sure if it was correct. Tanganyika region. So in 1414, so I am curious as to why you chose that time and place to set your novel. Yes. So um, I read this essay collection. I don't think you would call it an essay collection. I think it's only by a couple of people, but it's called um, Boy Wives and Female Husbands. And it talked about um, sexuality uh, in ancient African societies, like all over the continent. And the, that book really just opened up my mind in all these ways. And I think I was reading that book around the time that people were talking about how, you know, queerness came from white people, it came from Europe, you know, it was nothing to do with different African societies. And, you know, even people in Jamaica were saying the same thing. They're like, yeah, you know, you get that disease from the white man. It has nothing to do with us. Oh, boy. So, um, It was, I don't even know how I found it, but I was so happy to have found this book that talked about all these different ways that we loved each other, that people are, you know, just not accepting of in a lot of different black communities right now. And so um, once I read it and absorbed it and just, and and sat with it, I was like, oh, I want to write about a couple or a, a village or a society that this is normal, this is normalized and this is passed down and this is just one aspect of loving, one aspect of being that is just part of the community. And that's where the, the book idea came from. That's what we love so much about it. Um, like it's, there's no stigmas attached. It's just a thing that's a part of life. Um, so can you mm-hmm. tell us a little bit more about your research process in creating that society? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know if that was a process. I was just like, what if, mm-hmm. you know, um, and there were aspects that there were things that, it, that the book talked about that I said, oh, yeah, that's perfect. You know, about the idea of, um, you know, female chiefs or um, women who chose their lives and if they chose to live as like not typically female then they would you know get their own set of wives or you know whatever they did that it was it was about what you could afford to do Mm -hmm. and uh not about you know you can't do this because you know the chief doesn't do this or whatever so yeah i think it was an inspiration there are certain things i took from it but i wouldn't say there was actual like targeted research (laughs) (laughs) 
more well, like but there oh, were some really terms cool. <laughs> like i saw i looked up some of the terms and like saw that they were linked to like various you know cultures and different parts of africa and whatnot so that's research Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, every day Pushes I fight to be organized, and I fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't that it, that like organized at all. It was just like that sounds really cool. Oh my god, wouldn't it be great if? Well, it came together beautifully. Right, like it felt like a <laughs> thank you a fully fleshed out <laughs> world, and it I was. know that that's really yeah. hard to do, mm-hmm. and you did it. Yeah, it it came together really well. Like, you know, I, I just remember thinking about the society I wanted to create, but then the rain queen sort of like walked out of the mist on her own, and she just she was she was who she was. It wasn't about okay, what if what if I do this? What if I do that? It's like oh, he or she, she is. Just showed this up is what she realized. wants. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Wow. So. In the book, Nye works really hard to make herself into the person that she thinks Dooney wants her to be in the first part of the Mm -hmm. book. Have you ever found yourself in a position where you reshaped yourself for a partner or a potential partner? I feel like that's a yes, but I'm trying to, I can't remember when. (laughs) Blocked it out. (laughs) (laughs) Like, wait, I think, I think I might have. Hmm. Because it feels familiar. It resonates, Mm -hmm. you know? Um... Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I have, I have this, this woman, she's, she's like amazing, fantastic. And so, and, and, and exciting and, and like one of those like once in a lifetime sort of people. Mm-hmm. And so I think there are certain elements of my, my being that I was like, she wasn't really enamored of. And so I tried to sort of like, you know, massage that away or make it smaller or something like that so definitely i have mm-hmm. i don't think there's anything huge but it eventually was just like Ugh, that's not yeah. me yeah. all right she wasn't for you it's hard keeping up that shit too long you know mm-hmm. so definitely yes. one of the things that i really identify with was nice determination like she would be she was like fuck it i'm a you say i can't i'm gonna do it this is a shitty situation. I got it. Um, which one of your characters do you resonate? Do you identify with? Oh my gosh. I don't even know. Cause I feel like, you know, in the moment, of course I'm, I'm she's occupying me. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if I could say that, like I saw myself in, in her place at all. Um, Cause she, 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 she was so many things that I am not. You know, whether it was just her, you know, kind of like boss the wall, like, I want this woman, I'm going to go go after her, I don't care who was going to, like, I would never do that. <laughs> like, never. <laughs> she, you know, she's defying the gods, all these different things. And like, that's just not me. Yeah. Um, so I think in so many ways, like that story just, you know, I was this tiny essence like watching it all mm. on furrow like i wasn't necessarily like any of the characters if that makes any sense yeah. you know um it makes a lot of sense yeah do you have any characters in any of your other books that feel closely aligned to you and your experience oh uh, definitely bliss in my first book how so um yeah that was my it was like pseudo very pseudo autobiographical um you know the main character it was born in jamaica uh, went to the u.s um had all these things happen to her and then went back to jamaica to sort of find herself so even though it wasn't uh, a mirror um experience i identified a lot with her like with her feelings about family um her feelings about coming out like all of that and what's the name of your first book bliss okay mm-hmm Yes. Now I want to know about your latest book, A Lover's Mercy. Can you tell us a bit about it? Ah, yes. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to go grab it. I'm like, what is it about? (laughs) (laughs) Um, A Lover's Mercy. It was, I love this book. And in a lot of ways, it was unexpected. Mm. Um, 
because I had written the first one um, called The Power of Mercy. And I thought I was done. Hmm. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. And it was, I thought it was done. But then the publisher said, we'd love for you to do a sequel. And um, when I had done Mercy, I, was, I just thought that was it. There was nothing else to really expand upon. She was, her story had been told. She has her happily ever after. She's, that's it. Um, and so what I ended up doing with A Lover's Mercy was to tell the story of her partner, her lover, her her, her anti-superhero partner, who um, in in um, The Power of Mercy, they were antagonists. They weren't, they didn't get along at all. Um, and she's also kind of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> and so she, she says a lot of times, you know, she's not a good person. She, she's effective. Mm. She, does, she, she does what needs to be done. She's not around to be liked. And so it was interesting, like, diving into that kind of personality in order to write, write this book, which is from first, a first-person story, which I had never write. So it was interested in, in all kinds of ways. Mm. Why did you opt to go with first-person in this case? You don't have no idea. It just came out that way. <laughs> It came out that way. It might be because I had been reading a lot of first-person stories that were really, really well done mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Um, and for many, many years, I never liked to read first-person stories, and so I never wrote them. And so when I started reading these amazing first-person stories, I was like, oh, I want to try this. Yes, challenge. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's really, really difficult. So what are you reading now? What am I reading now? I feel like I keep on devouring books and then I forget about them as soon as I'm done. Um, right now I am reading this werewolf shifter collection. Hmm. Not collection, like a um, series of novels by Patricia Briggs. Okay. And... Um, she, there's one, the Mercy Thompson novels, I've read all of those. They're like, I don't know, 13 of them or something oh, like wow. that. And then the other one is, I think it's called Alpha Omega novels. And um, both sets have a Native American character, mm -hmm. which, which I find interesting in, in different ways. Since um, from what I see, she's a white woman, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. But, yeah. The writer is a white woman? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, she has, she has a great, she has, her, her world is really, really amazing. Um, and then, and then she, there's one word that she always uses that really cracks me up. And she always uses it in the same context. Like, she uses boiled a lot. Boiled? So every time like you see it, you're like, all right, boil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Her blood boiled. boiled her, yeah. No, she always uses it like in, in, in um, she, how does she do it? In, in a movement, like huh. the, the, the mob boiled upstairs. Huh. okay. Like, like in this, it's, it's a, it was really interesting and, and cool the first time, <laughs> but then I noticed every single That's book, <laughs> she uses, she, she uses that word. And always in the same sense, like huh. in the sense of movement and, and usually um, more than one person, yeah. like a group move, moving from place to place in, in a really, you know, agitated manner. Hmm. So I was like, huh, that's her jam. It's when you notice. <laughs> that's, that's her word. It's like, like when you notice someone saying like, and you're like, uh, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. And she usually uses, I think only like once. Hmm. It's like Once she's like, okay, book. I got to get it. Here's the moment in this book. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because this is so funny. Like when, and I read all her books, like all in like one jump. Mm. So it was super obvious to me like, oh, here it is again. <laughs> ah, here it is again. <laughs> you know? When's the boiling scene? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right. But yeah, I, they're, they're fun. They're Good. fun. They're fun all books. Right. Well, we will certainly um, share and link and all of that. Um, question. Why do you Answer. write? Because we're here for questions. <laughs> um, why do you write under a pen name? 
Um, why did I write under a pen name? I don't even know why I did it in the first place. Because my first publisher editor was like, why don't you use your real last name? And I was like, it's so boring. It's Lewis. I was like, it's so boring. And he was like, well, if you use your real last name, you'll be in the middle of the, sh- the bookshelf mm. versus at the end of the bookshelf. And I was like, that's a really good idea. You should have said this right? like five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, You're like, it's too late. Yeah. Right. It's too, too late. But yeah, I just, you know, it just sort of like seemed a thing to do. I, I didn't even think about writing under my real name at all. It's like, oh, whatever. I mean, it might have stemmed from sort of like subconsciously like, not wanting this connection to my Jamaican family and being mm. like, okay, and I was out in in my world, mm-hmm. but then like family is so separate from from everything. Like my mom knows all about me and all this stuff. And then gradually over the years, people have known because they my Facebook is super public, um, and so I never had said, oh, I'm queer or whatever, but. They, they know, but I think, I think that they think that it's a secret knowing. Mm. I'm the only one that knows. <laughs> I ain't going to say nothing. And then they look in a, right, and then they're right, in a gym right. with a million other people like, oh, you too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think it, it might have been like, it might have stemmed from that mm. at first. Just like, okay, let me just, you know, be mm, not even download, just sort of disconnected mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. from them. And then after I was like, there was no point because there's a whole Wikipedia page that says <laughs> <laughs> everything. <laughs> Where, so then with the Lindsay Evan books, in Evan's books, you, do you use that name because your characters tend to be a bit different? Well, the, that Lindsay Evans um, name is like my straight novels, mm-hmm. all of my Harlequin. That's what I meant novels. by characters being different. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a whole different genre. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of like dual point of view, straight romance kind of mm-hmm. stuff with Lindsay Evans. And yeah, definitely different. <laughs> and that was just to, to separate Fiona from Lindsay in terms of like audience, mm-hmm. because I think a lot of straight women would not read Fiona's stuff. Really? Um, but even though my queer audience doesn't mind, you know, it's not their favorite, but they're like, it's I'll you, try one right. of them or whatever. They know right, your, the quality right. of your writing, so... <laughs> you're dope yeah as a straight woman i like i got to the second part of rise of the straight, rain Erica? queen okay <laughs> i mean you know every time every time i say this kimria checks me on it i mean you know it's, it's i'm like more of a like 70 30 okay so as a 70 30 straighter um okay 70, yeah 70 30 straighter uh <laughs> I like your the second part of the novel once I'm trying not to give that away but like once (laughs) things happen I'm like yo this is the best fucking world in like this is the best world to live in (laughs) like yo like I'm trying give me a ticket let me get here so (laughs) yeah but also I'm 70 30 so maybe that's the 30 of me talking I don't know but probably probably. yeah (laughs) I I don't know I mean well I'm happy you enjoyed that world yes (laughs) It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah, I already enjoyed writing it. Yes, you were curious. About what does... I, I ask this question a lot because I'm fascinated by the answers that black people give. What does success look like to you? Oh, gosh. For me, success is being happy, of course, and then not struggling. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. Basically, that's good. Nice and yeah, <laughs> simple and pure. I love it. Yeah, I don't want a lot. Good. Well, you, happiness is a lot, right? So mm-hmm. it, it is, though. It is like when you when you have it and it's real and it's lasting. There's it's nothing so like full. it. It's, yeah, it's filling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I like to ask. Carrie is the the serious one. She comes up with serious questions. My contribution to this interview. <laughs> Are the would you rather questions? So, <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> would you rather mm-hmm. know your soulmate your entire life but be unable to partner mm-hmm. with them? Oh god! Or meet your soulmate 
and and be able to partner with them for only two years of your life. The second one. Okay. Yeah. 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 The second one. Like I, not that she was a soulmate or anything, but like I connected with a, with an amazing woman for about two years. And when I tell you that it was like explosive and mind altering and like soul opening, Mm. It's over, but I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, I think that I, what I've experienced with her will more than likely never be duplicated. Mm-hmm. And because I had what I had with her, it's totally fine with me. Mm. Okay. Right. Yeah. What about you, Camria? <sighs> Shit. Um, I hadn't thought about my answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. I right. would rather be able to be with them for two years. I feel like that would be a blessing and a spot of joy that I would always be able to call back on. And just because whatever other relationships I got into weren't necessarily with my soulmate, it wouldn't mean that they weren't beautiful and fulfilling and rich. Um, but I would still have that memory like that, not just in my mind, but like that sense that you have in your body that people imprint on you. Like I'd still be able to carry that with me and I'd want that. Yeah. Yes. What about you? E? Y'all make it sound so beautiful. I just, yeah, I mean, I would, <laughs> I would go for the second just because I'm not trying to stare at you and want you for my entire life. No, <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me, if only for two years. <laughs> That just sounds straight up painful, though, right? It's like, you know, yeah. the most delicious, juicy peach in the world. And you're just like right there, right. just beyond your reach. And you know how it would taste amazing, mm-hmm. right? And you, you know that it's for you, mm-hmm. but it's also not meant for you. And yeah. you just. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think you'd always have this, um, this what if hanging over you that would be a shadow over your other relationships, yeah. too. Nothing would satisfy you. Yep. Exactly. Right. So I'd rather, yeah, have it for two years for sure. Yeah. That's a great question, E. Da-da-da. It is a great question. Thanks, guys. <laughs> 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 All right, Fiona, you said that you were writing this morning. What are you working yes. on? What's up next for you? That you can tell us without <laughs> spoiling anything. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I'm just trying to think of how do I even describe this thing that's getting more complicated every day. Um, <laughs> Um, the novel is called The House of Agnes, hmm. and it's about um, a woman. She runs an escort service, Ooh. and um, someone appears in her life and tries to challenge her um, her owner, not even ownership of the escort service, but just to challenge who she is, challenge her life. And um, has to force her to, to rethink everything. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. That's super. That's super vague. But <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> like it's what enough. else? It's a little taste. Yeah, yeah. A so, taste. like, I'm I'm really fascinated by sex work, and I think it's it's beautiful and necessary. Mm-hmm. And I and, and I want sex work. workers to be. It is work, and I want sex workers to be able to you know be insured and and be protected. That's and right. I mean they they're working right. And sex workers have been around for forever. And so I wanted to write a story about that, even though what I'm writing now isn't necessarily about that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about someone who, you know, she's seen the, the bad side of sex work and wants to make it safer for some people hmm. for, or for those that she's able to make it safe for. Yeah. Well, I think it's great that you're taking this as a topic to set your story in. Yeah. Because I think it helps normalize and make it more, you know, like when it's not the story about the the ills of sex work, you know, like just it's a mm-hmm. it's a profession. Mm-hmm. It's the thing she does. This is a part of her, but it isn't all that she is. I'm assuming it's a female lead. Mm-hmm. But if, it's a, yeah, it's, qu- it's a queer yeah. story. Yeah, so everyone's like, but I mean, like, I, I love that, <laughs> you know, like I. I feel like that's what we try to do also with our sto- with the stories that we pick here. Like we don't want to have 
a very special episode of right, the turn Lord. on. Like it's just <laughs> this is a part of life. This is some shit that happens. So yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited to yeah, read yeah. the next book. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to finish it. I mean, it's it's definitely becoming different. Hmm. <laughs> a bit more different than I planned. So I just hope that it ends up being well done um, and that I'll finish on time. <laughs> so my editor won't kill me. <laughs> yeah, they do threaten that. It'll be great, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, hope so. <laughs> when it's done, where will be a, people be able to find it? And where can they find you online? Um, when it's done, they can find it on um, my website, which is FionaZed.com, F. I L N A Z E D D E dot com. And it'll also be on my publisher's website, Ilva Y L V A Publishing dot com. I always get the last part wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be sure to list. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, it'll be there and it'll be at Karis Books in Atlanta as well. So it'll be it'll be around. Awesome. And then on Twitter and on Instagram, you're at Fiona Zed. Yes. Okay. Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, everything. Oh, at Oh, and then your yeah, other your website for your uh, straight work is lindsayevansrights.com. Yes, exactly. Awesome. Okay. Well, that is it for this week's episode of The Turn On Fiona. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you all for thank listening. You. Take care. Thank you for inviting. Bye. Yay. This episode was produced by us, Erica and Kenria, and edited by Ballistic. The theme song is from Brazy. First, please leave a review in your favorite podcast listening app. For real, we want to hear from y'all. Send your book recommendations and all the burning sex and related questions you want us to answer to the turn on podcast at gmail.com. And please subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app. Follow us on Twitter at the turn on pod and Instagram at the turn on podcast. And find links to books, transcripts, guest info, and other fun stuff at turnonpodcast.com. Bye.